Good evening, everybody. So today is August 24th, right? So we will uh, start our second week. This is our third lecture. Okay. So actually tonight we will discuss uh, growth of function and asymptotic analysis, like big O notation, big omega notation, and theta notations. And we will see, we will start uh, master theorem and we will see how to use master theorem to find uh, efficiency of an algorithm okay so in our last lecture we discussed that we have very two common uh, algorithms uh, number one is insertion sort algorithm and another is one is mars sort algorithm right so we saw that insertion sort algorithm take big O n squared running time, mm -hmm. but uh, the Mars sort algorithm takes big O n log n. So which one is efficient? Which one is better? Mm, but it says that n log n, one of the Efficiency, one of the algorithms efficiency is n log n, mm -hmm. n times log n. Another is n squared. Definitely n squared is more cheap than uh, n log n. So in terms of efficiency, we, we in general we say n log n. The algorithm that has uh, more time consuming that is more efficient. We will see this today, okay? So, the <coughs> growth of a function that we, we mainly analyze in terms of asymptotic notation. That means we consider that for very large n. Literally, we call infinite. But in general, in real life, there is no infinite value. We say for very, very large value, we call that in general an infinite value, right? If it is very large, but OK. so. Literally, there is no infinite value. This term, common term, we say when we have a very, very large number, we don't know how large it is, then we, we call that infinite. So, and then these are the notation like a real number. N means natural number. It starts from 0 to 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, all uh, like integer numbers, it's, it's starting with 0. And then this, this symbol is called real number. R is in italicized. That all, all of the numbers that I can put on a number line, including 0, any positive number, any negative number, including all fractional numbers, decimal numbers, and then all whole numbers, you can put on a number line. For instance, if we have a This is a straight line, if you say, and if you say 0, this point is 0. For instance, this point is 1, this point is 2, dot, dot. We say that this goes up to infinity, plus infinity. And in the left side, we say that this one is in, in, in negative infinity. That means negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. We have many other points inside between one and two. We don't know how many points. All of this fit in a real. So in some book, you will see like R like this. OK. And N is a natural number, like 0, N. So some in book, some book, you will see N like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, up to this. And then real number is actually any number from negative infinity to positive infinity, any number. Okay. And then we will see sometimes G, like this kind of G. It is nature, it, it is natural number, one starting from one, two, three, four, five, something. Zero is not included here. So for instance, we will use these symbols. Okay. And the infinite num infinite symbol that 
is a symbol that we don't know it's, it's real value okay so we will measure the performance in asymptotic performance that means for very large n in case of very large n we don't know how large it is but we will consider that it's a very large number okay. uh, let's uh, come with some example so there are three there are three symbols notations that are widely used well known for for asymptotic notations of n algorithm defining as into notations first one is called big o n so, so this is uppercase o that is called big o okay and the second one is called big omega big omega notation this is called for lower bound and big o is for upper bound okay and the third one is well known is called theta notation or it is in other words it is called type bound okay i in the book i asked you to read or look at this this page right the page that has this this information okay so it is confusing confusing actually this one because sometimes people mislead especially with the second first one and second one e, e, you see that with the big notation and omega notation people confuse so let us understand one clearly then hopefully we will understand we will remember the other one okay so please give attention okay so upper bound is denoted by big O notation which is upper big upper case O okay for instance we say that the insertion sort algorithm takes big O n squared right so now we will see that how really it works and how really what do we mean by this okay in general any function for instance uh, last time you remember that we discussed a I'm sorry we discussed a function like if n equal to n squared plus 5n plus 25 in the first two lectures we discussed this this term expression right we discussed this procedure like what is that name like this one okay n squared 5n plus 25 okay we, we can discuss this whether how it comes big o n squared okay in terms of the definition we will come here okay so big o n look at the 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 corner you see that right in the corner you see the, the geometric drawing or interpretation of this this form function let us that think that this function is something like this if there is a function f n is like this. we don't know it is its expression whether it is like this or that we don't know yet for instance this you see that the in general the definition it says that for instance if any function f n okay so this is our different function if this function okay is called big o of another function so here big o of gn or oh, another function gn is another function for instance we don't know gn yet okay so we write fn equal to big o of gn gn is another function if there exist constants 
one constant c that is greater than zero is positive constant value and another constant and another number another number n zero that is greater than zero because n is, is positive number n is for number definitely we have positive number right for instance for insertion sort algorithm we consider how many data value we have so n make can be thousand or one million or one hundred right so in that all that case n is a positive number we cannot have negative five numbers we need to sort okay so definitely n is a positive uh, n zero n is a positive number so then we need another n zero like we don't if so is from zero to here n within this x axis on line n such that if we find that if we have a here this f n greater or equal to zero value of f n is greater or equal to zero and but less than c times g n so what is mean by c times g n this is g n is another function okay and if we multiply it the we if we plug in n value value of n right so then this time this we will find a value if we plug in a value for instance n equal to 5 right or 10 or 20 or 4 or 6 we will get a value right for instance let us consider that we may have like g n equal to g n equal to let me say 5 n plus 25 let me stop this up. and then we have f n equal to this right n squared plus 5n plus 25. So if n and D, g n are different function, right? So now if we find any c constant number that is greater than 0, okay, okay, that f of n, if we plug in n, we will get a value Le always less or equal to g of c times g n okay for all n greater or equal to this is the condition for all n greater than n zero look at this this geography the geometric interpretation so this is the this is the fn fn function is start from here it is it goes down then it, it goes up and then it goes down and then now it is moving this way okay and then c times gn function maybe this gn is equal to maybe this or not we don't know yet so c times gn is is pretty straightforward for example here right but the fn it crossed it intersect c times gn a few times right here one point here it intersect another point it intersect another point it intersect Okay, that at least we got three points over here. Possible value of n zero. So n zero could be this value for n. For instance, maybe n equal to one over here. Maybe n equal to two over here. Maybe n n, n, n equal to four over here. So we got at least one, two, and four, three values. But look at that. After this point, this f n function it goes always below to c of g n. It, th there is no scope that it will touch again because it has direction this way it has direction this way it has direction this way but this has direction up way so there are two di different directions right they will never intersect if it is case that for instance then after this value after any value for n and greater than n zero for all of this n value right we can say that c of g n this function has value greater than f of n value means y if we say y equal to for instance if we say y equal to fx is a function right the right side is independent variable and left side is dependent variable right so here right side is n right side is n so then n is this way this way n and then maybe y if we say y y is this way 
So then when we plug in here any value, for in for instance n equal to four, then we get we will get value of f n. Okay, that value will go up. Y x y through y axis, and n value will go through x axis. So if we say this is x axis. Look at the picture that if it is case that after a certain point there is no way that this this f n function never touch or cross cross this c of g l. In that case, we say that f n is a function. F n has limit big O n big O g n or another function. That means this function has a big O that means in the worst case this is has an upper bound. Okay. In the worst case, okay, so it will take this much time. Okay, you have a question? Sorry? n n0 is another number for instance consider that insertion sort algorithm we are dealing with some numbers right how many numbers maybe 10 20 5 10 100 1000 right we don't know that that number yet so that any value for all value in general n and there is a specific value if we find a specific value for instance n equal to 4 only four number deal with that is n zero you understand so here the rule of thumb is that you see that after this point n zero okay this function if n always goes down it never crosses or intersects it never touches it never reaches to c of gn okay in that case we denote f n equal to b o of f n b o of g n could be for instance um, in, in this case we don't know so we consider like for instance here g n equal to 5 n plus 25 or we don't know we, we or we may have g n equal to n squared we will find g n we will find g n okay if we find the value of gn, then we see that fn equal to big O of gn. What is the value of gn? In our case, on insertion sort algorithm, we found this is gn. We found gn equal to n squared. Right? So this is the rule. Uh, this is the definition of upper bound or big O notation. Has anyone any question? Okay, so here is drawing, give the attention to drawing. For instance, if I draw something like this. call this c of g n and we call this f of n okay so here one intersection two intersection three intersection fourth intersection okay literally apparently it may say this one is n zero but is this drawing correct no, no. i said no it's not correct so what is the mistake over here in my drawing some point you see that the direction from over here see the direction from over here it says that apparently at some point it will still again again crosses or intersects this right right so when you draw this be careful mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, fix this
spaces here. CFGN. So apparently it says that it, it shows it, you don't need to give arrow. Even if you don't give arrow, right? Still it's apparently it looks that this this function will cross some where at some point in a finite position for a finite end value, right? So this drawing is not correct. You understand why it's not correct? Because the direction of Fn still it intends to cross or touch Gn. So this is why you see that this direction is this way, this direction is that. You understand the f, this is the bigger notation. Okay, now we will come up with, for instance, is for this function, for this function. If we say that gn, if we say gn equal to, not this one, we can say that gn equal to n squared. Okay. And do we have any C value and any N0 value? Do we have any C that can be any fractional number also? Is greater than zero. It can be a decimal value. We can consider an integer value. And N0 must be an integer value. Because N0 represent N, right? N is a number of in, our, in our sorting algorithm number of elements so for this case do we have any such c and n0 yes we do because let us consider this part 5n plus 25 okay so 5n plus 25 so for any For any, for do we have any c? For instance, for if we say c equal to two, let me see if c equal to two, and then n zero equal to five. If we say c equal to two and n zero equal to five, so then for for at 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 five. At this point, five. C of means two times uh, two times G N. Two times G N. Okay, and then if N. Then two times g n will be two times g n g g and then five times twenty five and f n f n will be coo 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 f n will be uh, for five twenty five plus twenty five plus 25 75 right okay so this is small this is this is uh, not greater than this is not greater than but at some point maybe I can get in zero okay so n equal to for a large number Okay, if I consider c equal to 10, so then 10 times 25, at least I will get this. I will get this. So if it's considered c equal to 10,
which is 10 times 10 times for n0 equal to 5 that is 10 times 25 okay and then for n, n0 equal to 5 then we have this side equal to 5 square plus 25 plus 25 right equal to 75 75 so here do we uh, which side is better larger this side right so c of g n this side is is greater okay so in that case for c equal to 10 and n0 equal to 5 we may have a make it a smaller c maybe seven six or something what the artist we got on right for in this case for c value equal to 10 and n0 value equal to 5 we got this formula true here because fn equal to 75 it is greater than 0 and fn equal to 75 it is less than 250 okay so then how about we say that for all n greater than n0 now how about for n equal to 6 for n equal to 6 so the right side will be let me delete something So for n equal to or n zero equal to six. Okay, if n equal to if n equal to six squared plus five into six plus twenty-five equal to thirty-six plus thirty. Sixty-six, right? Plus twenty-five. Sixty-six plus twenty-five. Sixty-five plus twenty-five equal to seventy hundred hundred one zero one, right? Okay, and then C into G N. C value equal to ten. Okay, and then G N will be put A N equal to six. Then six squared equal to 36 360 right so since it is very true for n0 equal to 5 and 6 definitely it will be true for n0 equal to 7 8 9 10 all other numbers so this is the threshold this is the threshold so we have if we have a gn value function like this then we can say that we may have we can have at least a positive c value and an n0 value such that for all n value greater than this n0 value we get this fn is greater or equal to 0 but less or equal to c into gn this is the definition of upper bound you understand okay now later we'll see that if if there is a rule of thumb that if a function ha is has a upper bound if, if we call say fn equal to b go of n squared right then definitely if will be fn equal to b go of n cubed because n cubed is always greater than n squared right and definitely it will be b go of n to the power 4 and for upper terms hmm? so here at least we see that this is the this is the our the lowest steep function this is called upper bound okay has anyone any question yes
Why do I? Okay, why did you guys roll that and pull out the one and pull? Yeah, are you checking about this one too hard? Yeah, we don't have the last guy. Did you? No, it's a girl. Oh, and it's four dollars. Is it? Yeah, I'm checking if you guys rolled it. I said n should be called four. Is there another function? We can say g and equal to n squared. We consider g and function equal to n squared, right? And we saw that for z n equal to n squared, we find c value and n value, right? The c value and n value says that it meets this form, this condition. If it is, it is, it is, there is a formula that that if a function has upper bound big n squared, then definitely it has upper bound big o n cube, n four, n five, upper terms, because for any n. Positive n, which one is bigger? N cubed has a larger value than n squared, right? N four has a larger value than n squared, right? N five has a larger value than n squared. So definitely, if we get a if a function has mm, an upper bound n n squared, then definitely it is it will have upper bound n cubed. Yeah, we say an example, we could have this, but we are not considering this. We will say that this one is, is the lowest one. We consider that this one. We will give another example, okay? So, but uh, I, I, I like to give you focus over here, the, the, how the picture was. I, li I want to give you the focus uh, here, how the original picture was. At some point, this after n0, there is no way that it will touch. You understand? So in that case, if we say f1 is has a big O of gn. What is gn? gn is another function. For instance, in our case, we got gn equal to n squared, right? Okay. Anyone has any question? Okay, so this is type kind of con con type of confusing. Okay, Think, but if you understand this, understand one of these, then you will be understand other thing. Okay, so here the same thing. That is the definition. That is the mean call, mean definition, and this is mathematical expression. Same thing. Same thing. We can say mathematical expression in the book. You will see definition, and then both. Mathematical expression and then this geometry figure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We will show that we will use master theorem. There is a theorem is called master theorem. We will use this. We will use master theorem to to find the big O notation. What was that? Master theorem. Yeah, we will come that. In the, it, uh, are you present in the last lecture? Yeah. So I gave you, I asked you to read a book, one page at least, in the book. This page, right? Did you have a chance to look at the book? Uh, I give you homework to see after one page. So let me finish this, then I will go through this, okay? At the end of this lecture today, we will go. Okay? So this is another, uh, the notation is omega notation. That is called lower bound. So lower bound is okay. One more thing, maybe I can see. This is upper bound. So why it is called upper bound? Why do we call it upper bound? You see that this picture, this is not really need, needed to be like this. It can be a, is something like this. It can be something, it can be something like this. Or let me make it more simple. Let me more, make it more simple.
for instance c of g n is like this a straight line okay and for instance our f of n like this f of n so for instance this is a straight line this is a straight line okay parallel line parallel to the x axis straight line if this is a straight line right so then and there's a condition is that it the fn will never touch this this one after this point okay then which one is 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 upper this point is upper limit right this is the upper limit right so all of this point at this value function has lower value right this is the uppermost value you understand because if it touches then you will get another same value or our function our our maybe like this if we have like this uh, i'm sorry not this if c of g n is goes like like this it is going down somewhere okay but f1 after this point f1 can never touch go straight because if it is go straight at least then it will touch here right some point so it may be more something like this okay so that if this is the n0 point this is the n0 point then this is the up upper point right the y value y value has the highest value over here okay? this is quite this called upper bound okay and now let us go to the next one so this is lower bound okay so a function the same thing you see that but it is reverse order a function f of x is said to have omega g n is another function if there exists a c greater than zero and n zero that is positive and if we have f n if we have for this c and n zero value if we have if n is always greater or equal to c of g n for all values greater than n zero right so here you see that f1 after this is the function f1 fn fn function after this this point it goes up that it never touches here and this one c of g n it goes downward uh, at least parallel at least straight and it never touches f of n so in that case f of n has the lowest value over here right for other n for other n let me see if we take a value n for instance n zero over here so therefore n equal to this we will get y value here right we will get y value here this is n0 and this is y value so this value but it, 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 it we cannot say that this is n0 because it does not touches the both functions over here so here this is n value is over here where it starts and all other values for all values in even you draw like this or any other values right so this is the lower value all of these values are larger all of these values are larger so it will go like this not here so in that case we see that Okay. For the insertion sort algorithm, it has lower bound also big O n squared. Okay. So then, in this case, we see this is the called lower bound, or 
to denote it as omega notation. This is the mathematical definition, this is the definition, and this is mathematical expression. Has anyone any question? Now compare these two and understand these two. Okay. You see that this one is completely different, right? Figure for the upper bound, C of G n it went over here. After point, right? And for lower bound, for lower bound, C of G n after this point, C of G n goes down. Now there is one is called tight bound. It is denoted by theta notation. If we find two numbers C1 and C2 for greater than zero, such that for an n zero, we get we we find that f of n lies between C1 times G n G n and C2 times G n. For instance, here in this picture, you see that after this point in zero, Fn always lies between C1 Gn and C2 Gn. It never touches C1 Gn, it never touches C2 Gn. It has its own path within between these two. This is called tight bound. In other way, if we say that there is a common, if there is a common thing, something. So for the upper value or max value and the lower, uh, the, uh, uh, the lower value or down value, if there is a common value, that's the situation. We call that this theta notation. Now let us see the picture. Now let us see all in one place. This is big O notation. Okay. And see, <coughs> <coughs> this is omega notation. So big O notation is upper bound or lower bound? This is a quiz question. Huh? upper bound and then omega is used for lower bound right so after this point this fn function has l as greater p okay and then theta notation is called tight bound if there is after there is so this is the point you see that at this point this point it always lies between these two for theta notation, we need to look for seek for two constants, C1 and C2, right? For upper bound and lower bound, we need to seek for only one C value, right? Okay. Has anyone any question? Yes, I like I like you to draw this. This is confusing. Please draw this a uh, few times. Okay. Then figure out your own way to remember this. At least if you remember the big one, big one, then you will be able to write the other one, right? So big one is the, the other one is omega n is the, in the opposite. Yeah. Yes. Sir. So the asymptotic uh, tight bound does it have relation to change theory? Calculus. In calculus. These are actually, these came, concept came from mathematics. But we are learning or discussing this in terms of uh, uh, programming concept. So originally, these are from mathematics, right? So who was that, that, that we call the father of computer calculators? Great mathematician, right? And then what is your question? I was just wondering if it had a relation to the Cambridge theorem. If it's not really at all, then what? <laughs> so this is in mathematics. They, these are terms, these terms came from mathematics. My undergraduate degree was math, so I, I learned this a long time ago. But still, I confuse sometimes. You know that? Still, I confuse because these are these are really confusing terms. 
and because there at this time we have to remember a lot of things right sometimes we want to remember our friends phone number and then <laughs> address location many things we have in our head right and uh, as we are gave going growing up our brain is going down so, so it's, it's, it happens okay has anyone any other question yes So omega is called is average case. Omega is called average case, and we will see that big O, this is called upper, the worst case, okay? And this is called in the best case, okay? And this is in the, in the average case. So please read the book. Book has like different kind of more explanation, okay? Now let us go through with another example, okay? So these are the functions, for instance, okay? These are the fun some functions. This is one set function, this is another set function, this is another set function, okay? So for this one, big notation, we, uh, we know that, so big notation, we know that we, we need to first consider the dominant term, right? In our first two lectures we discussed, mm -hmm. which one is the dominant term here, n squared? Just get out, read, read out, get rid of the coefficient. This five is coefficient, right? Get rid of this. Then two n. This is instead of two n and then n squared. Which one is dominant? N squared. Then this big O n squared. Okay. Here in this set. Okay, for this set. <coughs> I am confused about the last two two lines. The last two lines. Maybe I'm not sure why they put these two. two uh, these two. So without these two, I'm fine because I'm confusing. For this one, for this one, this is that 14 squared, 16 squared plus. We, we will get, uh, get rid of the constant term. Okay, so what is the lower bound over here? So we will consider the term that is minimum, except the constant term, okay? So this is n squared, right? So this, it can be n squared, omega n squared. I think it should be like something, for instance, here. This should be something n to the power n over here, or something or n squared over here or something like this. So I'm, I'm doubt about these two terms. Okay, so this is a big O notation in square, the dominant term, and here the less dominant term, nominal term, n squared, okay, n squared, and this is n cube and n squared, this is n squared, and n six and n four, between all of these, so we got n squared. And here, for the theta n squared, theta, tight bound, we will take the common terms. What are the common between these two, between these two s sets, set of function? n squared is common, 4 n squared common, right? And then 6 n squared plus 9, this is common. It is here, and it is here, for this term common. And we have 5 n squared plus 2 n. This one is, yes, is common. Okay, this one is common. So now if we consider only this part, common part, okay, then what is the notation over here? Say theta notation. That is the common part is n squared, right? Dominant part. So this is theta notation is n squared. We have a few minutes left. Let us go to, s we have a few more slides. For instance, this is another ex expression, okay? In square x equal to, if x equal to x squared plus two x plus one. So if we ask, is it,
is it true that if x equal to oh okay show that if x equal to alpha has this has big n square efficiency is big n square okay for instance here we need to find whether there is a c value and there is a n value okay for which we need to find c value and we have to find n value n zero value right so here this is the the another way that they, they replaces with uh, mm, uh, 2x plus 1 by 3x square this is another way I discussed in another function if x, x squared plus 5x plus 25 another way this is another way so for instance here by this way they got they got for in precise one this is maybe this is n0 equal to 1 and c equal to 4 c equal to 4 we got okay, c greater equal to 4 we got fx equal to a square so yes it is then it is, it is true You can try with the other way. Okay, then the question is that, okay. Okay, there are a few more, okay. So please go through this. Go through this. If fx equal to 7x plus is, is this group. So uh, in, the, in the assignment or in the test, you will be asked to find should not be x okay if say x is fine or n should be fine so this is n0 value is 7 and then c value is 4 in the assignment you will be given some kind of expression and you will be asked to justify whether it is true or not for instance it, it has it big o n or is and then one second please give me one second Big n squared. Let me see. Can I get? Okay, there's uh, as I discussed that if a function has n squared, big o x squared, this function is in terms of x. So, so I will say x squared. So this function, if it is in terms of x, okay, then definitely it is in terms of x squared or x cubed. Okay, these are true also. Yes, you have a question? Um, so test, you will have more like not in depth. So we will we'll discuss that test, about test before we come up with test, okay? We'll discuss that. By the time you, t you do your homework assignments, you will learn how to write on the test. So now, now our goal is to understand. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the test, okay? If you understand this, you can remember this, then you will be able to write in the test. If you understand the definition of big O n, okay, then you will be able to write down, right? You will be able to draw something. I'm flexible. I understand that in the test, you have to memorize a lot of things. But in the open book test, right? You can see in the book. Okay, let us cover, let us focus on right now to understand the concept. <coughs> okay, this slide, I think there is a mistake. There are some mistakes over here. It will be in LZ, not LOG. So last time we discussed that LZ means with base. LZ is base 2, right? Okay, and log is base 10. And LN is base E, right? Yeah. Base E. Okay. 
So we discussed this last time. So <coughs> if n equal to 1000, then b go of ln lg. This is will be lg. This will be lg. lg on 1000 equal to, OK? We know that lg. Lg to 1000 equal to approximately 2 to the power 10, right? 2 to the power 10 equal to? 2 to the power 24, right? 2 to the power 10 equal to 1024. 1024. So this is approximately 10. Okay. So you see that this, among these, which one is, has more time? Like this one, n to the power n has more time, right? More inefficient. So in the next phase, so you see that in terms of n, in terms of n, if we estimate big O, so for instance, big O of 1 is constant, right? For any n value, the y value is same, right? It takes constant time. Time is same. And then this is log n, this is n, and this is n log n, this is n square, this is 2 to the power n, this is factorial n, right? And then it is missing n, n, n to the power n n to the power n should be n to the power n if n equal to let us draw this n equal to 1 n to the power 1 equal to 1 right n equal to 2 n to the power 2 equal to 2 to the power 2 4 right n equal to 4 4 to the power 4 4 to the power 4 equal to 4 times 4 to the power 4 equal to 16 to the power 2 equal to 256, right? Okay, 4 is 256. So that means we start with 1, 1, then if 2, then go up a little bit. So if it is 2, then 4, okay? If it is 4, then it becomes 256. So like this will be, more steep, more steep like this. So this is n to the power n. This for large n, this will take more time, right? So this is more efficient, and wh what is the m the uh, most efficient in terms of non-constant n log n, right? Okay, this is an n. This is the linear. Okay, and this is also linear. Better, and this n log n. This is also non-linear. So n squared, this is also binomial function, right? It will take something like this. OK. OK, the next, read the next few uh, phases of these slides. OK. OK, one thing is that we denote that this floor and ceiling. OK, floor means the lower value. For instance, if we say floor, floor of 2.5 equal to 2.0, okay? And then ceiling of 2.5 equal to 3.0. Okay?
Oh, a few more slides. We are not covering this. Okay, and okay, assignment will be not this week. So, okay, one more thing is that if you go to D two L, let me. You see that I uploaded quiz zero. Mm -hmm. Please take it. Okay, if I want, if I need, or if I want to give some extra credit. I will consider this one, this quiz, okay? This from mainly syllabus and policies. Okay. It's easy, okay? You can take unlimited of time. Me, it will take 30 minutes. This first thing, this. Okay, and then please read. Okay, content page. See, I added, I'm adding the spark on slides. Okay, and then please download it. And I added version 2.0 of the syllabus. <coughs> the version 2.0, there is a major one difference is that I applied 5% five per for the attendance and class participation. Okay, sorry. From the next week, I'm thinking to get it only on pages archiva, the digital app, the calendar. If I get authorization, then I'll use that. Otherwise, it will be. Can anyone give me a piece of paper? Uh, sorry, sorry. your name and then um, who is your signature? Please give signature something in so that, that cannot be copied. Like do not do some, something like give your signature like this. Do not give signature like this, okay? So then if I apply 5% for the attendance and quiz and part class participation, there will be 20% for the assignments. Okay, one thing is that this is a change, and then another thing is that, as I discussed last week, if you miss the final exam, then since final exam is cumulative, then all other previous accomplishments, like quizzes, assignments, and tests, will be considered with a 30% penalty. That means I discourage to miss the final exam. If you miss the final exam, then you will lose at least one letter period. Okay? If you do well in test one, test two, all quizzes and assignment, but if you still miss the final exam, if you need to get compensation, then you will get one bit down. Okay? Do not do this, please. Do not miss final exam. Okay, that's it. So we have a few min few, few minutes. I, I'm sorry, I'm late. We could not finish. Maybe we will in our next lecture. We will discuss chapter four. Okay, the master theorem. Okay, master theorem is a popular theorem. It's formula that is widely used. So here, say. We, we know that in our previous lecture, we discussed that our Marshall algorithm that uses divide and conquer method, right? Mm -hmm. The divide and conquer method has three major steps. Divide, conquer, and what is the next step? Combine, right? Mm -hmm. Divide, conquer, and combine. So divide math part, it splits the problem into some smaller problem. So in our sorting case, what is our problem? For a sorting algorithm, what is our problem? Our data is a problem, right? Our data is unsorted, we need to sort it. Or maybe it is sorted, but we need to justify it that it is, yes, it is sorted. Hmm? So we need to split our whole data, this problem, into some small pieces, small, small pieces, so that we can apply 
we can find a smaller unit. For instance, one unit, only one data. If you have only one data, then th there is no need to sort, right? Only one data, one value. It is no need to sort. And if we have only two values, then it is easy to sort, right? Just one check. Whether this side is larger, this side is larger. Then if you solve. Right? Is in no time we can do that. So this is divide method. We will divide the problem. We will split the problem in small problems. And the concur method we will use recursively. We will solve it recursively each of the sub problem. And then finally in the combined method we com will combine all of the solution that we got from the previous steps. Then we'll get the final answer. Okay. So in the divide and conquer method, it apparently uses it's, uh, uh, so the, the, uh, a technique that we is well known as master theorem. So the master theorem is used, is defined something like this. Okay, that is Tn for any algorithm that takes running time is n, running time t equal to theta n constant time if n equal to 1 or is small, n equal to 1, then it takes theta n on time. But in case otherwise, if n is called larger value, then it takes to, for the, for the master theorem, for the master algorithm, it takes 2 n by 2 plus theta n times. Okay, why it is 2 and n by 2? Because we are splitting our data size every time by 2, half, right? And how many pieces we are getting? Two pieces, right? Every time we are splitting into 2. Then 2 times n by 2. And then this part is for merging, right? After we solve problem, we merge a result, right? So this part is for merging. And then we will say that and so on, if we apply master theorem, then we'll see that this algorithm will take n log n, LGN, n log n. Okay, we apparently pronounce log n, but people who are take, who takes mathematics, they understand log n means either base 10 or base e. But in computer science, we mean log n means 10, base two, okay? I could say ln. I could say, oh, LG, it's LG means two, okay? Or it's pronounced as LG. So now we will see that how the master theorem is. This is the master theorem. Okay, we are almost over, so then I am giving the, I will come up with the phase that has the master theorem. Here? No. Okay. I need to go here. Sorry. Four point maybe five. We'll skip this. We'll go to four point five. In the book, you see that there are some some examples how to find the big notation. Okay. You will get that when we give a assignments. Mm -hmm. There is nothing due this week and except the quiz zero. And the next assign first assignment will be next week. Okay, let us study this week and then we will this we'll discuss uh, assignment next next week. So so I'm close, maybe four point five, not this one. Give me two, three, three minutes, extra minute time, please. I'm behind. Okay, they uses the master theorem here. What is that called? Okay, this is the master theorem. It is a well-known theorem. Okay. If a function has running time like this, Tn equal to A times T of N by B, okay, 
plus f n then here here n by b it means either floor or, or ceiling or both if let us start with the two if n if n can be written as theta of n is log b a actually it should be l g so master theorem it comes from originally mathematics so they like they write log but we write l g means base 2 ok so the log b a so something like this let me give it quickly something if if f n equal to theta or I'm writing in large n log b a okay then t n will be theta of n to the power log b n times log n we can give parentheses here for instance example for our mars sort algorithm right for mars sort we got t n equal to 2 t n by 2 plus theta of n right so here here a equal to 2 these two and b equal to 2 right these two right and <coughs> next only it can be n so here this theta n then theta n I am writing here then theta t n equal to theta of n to the power log 2 2 ok into log n then this one equal to theta n to the power 1 right this is 1 right anything we know that log, log a a equal to 1 we have this formula from mathematics right so this is 1 into the power 1 times log n so actually this is n log n this is the running time for mars sort mars sort algorithm we will discuss this in our next lecture okay so so try this is my homework read only at least this phase okay before you come to our next lecture please try to understand this this if you understand this one then two other two are easy okay other two are same thing okay and we will see that some examples for instance in the test you will give you, are, you will be given like this kind of formula and you will be asked to find the running time okay anyone has, has anyone any question okay good luck everybody and have a good evening.